Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 16th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today wrote up uh, what I would call sort of a more modern fish, and that's uh, something uh, that we do see quite a bit lately. First of all, uh, the email links uh, to an address in ipfs.io. This is the interplanetary file system, a distributed uh, storage system, which makes it difficult to take down specific phishing pages. The other thing they're doing is that they're displaying the victim's uh, homepage based on the email domain in an iframe. Now, this is something that you can actually easily uh, prevent. We have seen in the past sometimes where they're using some of screenshot services uh, like thumb.io uh, that's a little bit more difficult to prevent uh, but you should have uh, the right headers in your HTTP response that will prevent your page from being displayed in an iframe. It used to be that XFrame options was the header to use here, but more recently, uh, this switched over to Con and Security Policy. So you really need Con and Security Policy in order uh, to prevent this from happening. And one of the interesting vulnerabilities that Microsoft patched yesterday was CVE 2023-23397. This was the Microsoft Outlook vulnerability. I told you that uh, this is likely something very easy to exploit. Well, it uh, turns out that MDSEC now has a great write-up about this vulnerability, showing uh, what it's all about and how to exploit it. It's actually sort of a little bit an odd feature here. Apparently, uh, you're able to include a URL that's being used for the notification sound when you are sending a calendar invite. This URL then can point to an SMB file share, and this is how your NTLM credentials are being leaked and can be used uh, for a relay attack. I have to say, I'm actually a little bit disappointed that uh, there weren't some kids that figured it out earlier and uh, used uh, this feature in Outlook in order uh, to have it play some weird notification sounds. And then Going back to Microsoft's Patch Tuesday for another vulnerability here that I kind of missed yesterday, CVE 2023-23415. It's a remote code execution vulnerability using ICMP. And the description is very similar to a vulnerability that we had last year with a free BSD. An attacker can execute arbitrary code by sending a fragmented ICMP error. Actually, the ICMP error is not fragmented, but the packet contained in the ICMP error is fragmented. So that can lead to remote code execution. Interesting vulnerability. The one big uh, caveat, I guess, here that makes it difficult to exploit is that the target must be bound to a raw socket. Not sure if this would be exploitable, maybe if the victim is running ping. Uh, that uh, could possibly be something uh, would be interesting to basically turn ping into a sort of a remote code execution uh, tool here. And the Chromium project uh, published a post under the title Moving Forward Together with uh, some proposed changes for certificates and certificate authorities. This is sort of a proposal as part of the certificate authority uh, working group. And one of the things I want to point out here is that they are suggesting to limit the validity of certificates to 90 days. Right now, it's 998 days or basically 13 months. That was originally introduced by Apple with Safari and then other browsers and operating systems picked up on this. And now the 90 days, one of the big parts here is that they want to encourage automation. And uh, with Let's Encrypt, of course, we do have now the ACME protocol being widely used. Other set of authorities and tools have picked up on this as well. Uh, so shouldn't really be all that difficult, in particular, if you're already using Let's Encrypt, you may not even really notice a change here. What 
is important here if you do create any tools that take advantage of the Acme protocol, make sure that you do allow users to actually change the server that this tool connects to. Many of the tools sort of are hard coded to only allow connections to Let's Encrypt. But for example, if you have an internal certificate authority, then you may still want to use this protocol to keep rotating your certificate, so your certificates. The other uh, issue here here and that sort of will I guess soften the blow here a little bit if you do have an internal set of authority that you manually add as a trust of authority well uh, these rules should not apply so this is useful like for your IOT device and such that you use an internal set of authority for. You can still use long lift certificates for them uh, because, well, uh, that is one area where it can be quite difficult to sort of keep your certificates up to date. Well, that's it uh, for uh, today. And, uh, well, I don't really do a lot of sort of, you know, advertisements here for SANS or anything like this. Of course, uh, grateful to be employed, being paid for by SANS for my time here. But uh, I want to try something a little bit uh, different here. So a little bit reverse advertisement. If you are already a SANS customer, if you do occasionally talk to SANS staff, uh, to uh, salespeople or such, well, uh, tell them that you like the podcast, that you uh, listen to it. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.